Hello, welcome to part two of importing media. In this tutorial, we will cover how to import media from a file-based device, capture a snapshot, and create a stop motion animation. This is the studio import screen. Let's import our photos and videos from a digital camera. On the top left, we see import from. I'm going to select my camera from the list. My camera is hooked up to the computer using a USB cable. Notice I am able to see my photos and videos directly from the hard drive or the SD card of the camera. I can also choose which files to look at by selecting the pull down menu located on the bottom left. I'm going to leave all compatible media files selected. Each file has an orange check mark on the thumbnail. This check mark tells me that I'm going to import that file. Click on the check mark to remove it and the file will not be imported. To view a photo full screen, double click on it and the image fills the screen. To return back to the import screen, select the X on the top right or use the escape key on the keyboard. Studio Import can also play back your video files. Select the play button in the center of the thumbnail and our video file plays back. If you want to play the file full screen, there is a button on the top left of the thumbnail. You can also drag the slider to move through the clip. Pull the slider to the left to go to the beginning of the clip, or to the right to go to the end. On the top right, you will see Mode. The first mode is Delete Original. Select Yes to delete the original files from the camera after the files are imported. Select No and files will remain on the camera and be imported into the computer. The second mode is Ignore Duplicates. Select Yes and Studio will not bring a duplicate file from the camera to the computer. This is helpful if you have imported files earlier and you only want to import new files from your camera. Select No and Studio will import all files, even those that may have been imported before. Studio allows the user to select settings for naming files. Select the arrow to the right to see the options. The first option is to leave the original name from the camera. To create a custom name, select the down arrow and choose Custom. A new box opens to add even more customization to the name. Select the down arrow to see more choices. Number, creation time, and time of day are available. I'm going to select number which will give a unique number to my file along with my custom name. Select the X to close and save the new settings. Finally, type the new name for your files in the box. Also, you want to make sure that you know where your files are going to be stored on your computer. Notice on the left hand side we see import to. To change a destination folder for the video, simply click on the folder next to video and explorer opens up. Select a folder or create a new folder for your video to be moved to. Select OK for the new settings or select cancel if you want no changes. To import the files, just select start import and studio moves the files to the hard drive of your computer. We are going to skip this and show you some more features of the studio importer. I also want to talk quickly about the snapshot button. This button is used to capture a still image from your videotape or from a live video camera. I want to show you a new feature in Studio Import. Select Stop Motion to create an animation. Make sure that you have a camera hooked up to your computer and that the camera is set to Live Capture. To create an animation, we are going to grab a frame at a time. This new feature is a lot of fun. We are going to bring this cow to life. Simply select the Capture Frame button and our first frame is captured in the film strip below. Now move the cow forward and you will see a ghosting image from the first frame. This will help you adjust how much you want to move your object. Once you like the position, select Capture Frame again. We are going to move the cow again and select Capture Frame and a third frame is captured. Any frame can be deleted by simply clicking on the garbage can in the film strip. As you can see, we are in the beginning stages of creating our animation. I want to talk about a few more features in stop motion. On the right, we have a folder that contains settings. Click on the folder to see the settings. The first setting is the preview. Grab the slider and you can mix between the captured image and the next live image. The second setting will allow you to set the number of frames to display when ghosting. Currently, we have three frames set. Ghosting will allow us to see the direction of the animation as we capture it. To the left of the settings, there is a drop down menu. Select this menu and you will see the capture frame rate for the animation. 
there are two choices, 8 frames per second or 12 frames per second. I'm going to select 12 frames per second. In the film strip, select the first frame and now select the play button and our three frames play back. To return back to the live video camera, select the video button. On the top right, you will see mode. We can import our animation as a video, photos, or both. I'm going to select video. File name will let us name our animation. Just type a title in the box. OK, we are ready to bring our animation to life. Select start import and studio creates our video file and opens up our studio timeline. My animation was only 3 frames long. I would like to show you a longer animation I created. I am going to select the animation and select play. It is so easy and fun to create an animation using Pinnacle Studio. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on importing media part 2. Remember if you have a DV camera, Pinnacle Movie Box or a DVD or Blu-ray disc, I recommend you watch importing media part 1.